Now, the watch community is recently hit with a number of controversies, whether it's the watch market crashing or the journalistic side of the hobby being questionable, Houdinki has played a key role in many of these. Now, are we seeing a change for the worse? Now, when I began as a watch enthusiast, there's three websites that I frequent, a blog to watch, SJX, and of course, Houdinki. Now, I view, as many of you do, view Houdinki as the premier watch resource of the web. It has some great writing and the photography is fantastic. In fact, I actually modeled my YouTube channel around the aspirations that one day it will be at the same quality as that of Houdinki. However, things have changed in the past months that has got me thinking Houdinki might be headed for mediocrity. Don't get me wrong, the content that Houdinki brings is still very informative and accessible. Houdinki is the foremost destination for all things in the world of horology, making watches and information about them accessible to all. From microbrands to high horology, Houdinki has got you covered. Since 2008, you can read all of this and some more like interesting stories, arts, history, and culture. Ben, Jack, and James are my favorite writers and like many of you, I follow their content as articles and especially as videos. They're mostly fascinating and often entertaining. And who can forget that John Mayer interview? This is the Houdinki that I know as my interest for watches grew. This is a very strong identity that many brands strive to be at, collecting accolades and recognition. The content that they put out certainly is a product of this carefully crafted reputation. But then, there's the decline. Last month, Houdinki got over 3.4 million visits to their website. People are visiting on average 2.83 pages, which pretty much means that people would come on the landing page and then click on one of the articles and then leave. This is in itself not bad, it's actually pretty typical of popular web destinations. What's alarming though is the trajectory of organic traffic. Back in March 2022, they had over 600,000 visits for the United States fans. Last month, however, it slid down to 380,000. That's almost half of what they made in March. What could have caused this decline? The first element in the blueprint is likely the pandemic. We'd hoped that this decline was a mere anomaly, but if we put this in a graph, it's the lowest they've been since June 2019. This can be attributed to the pandemic as it's had this similar effect in Netflix and Disney Plus viewerships. People are less likely to frequent Houdinki simply because they're back to their work and not at home browsing. With this kind of reasoning, the rise in traffic may have been caused or attributed to people having a lot more time browsing because they couldn't go anywhere. But with more exposure, there's more room for criticism. This brings us to the next element, which is the growing negativity towards Houdinki because of bias. In August 2020, when Houdinki released its travel clock, it's a $5,000 hand-wound clock that you can travel with at a time when you can't travel due to the pandemic. Is it bad timing? Maybe. The price? Well, it's a source of rage and criticism. Some cite the expensive value proposition while others scoff at the rarity of the item, which then drives the price higher. Either way, it was sold out quickly, which shows the buying power of Houdinki's patrons. Another is the Houdinki insurance policy. Insurance policies of any kind is a subjective business model that leverages peace of mind for a fee. Personally, I do not see any problem in insuring your assets, but many people think that this business model does not belong from the place where they get their horological content. This same principle can be applied on the articles about watches in the Houdinki shop. A voice in the web that talks about a product is generally held to a high, unbiased position. When they start selling the said product that they are talking about, the credibility of the voice now becomes a biased promoter under the influence of the product's brand. 
I experienced this same conundrum with this very YouTube channel. My content is obviously sponsored by most of the watches I review. There will be influences from the sponsor that will affect the review. It is inescapable. But I'm an ant to Houdinki's lion. If my channel were to disappear tomorrow, it won't be missed, like Houdinki would be. And that brings us to likely the last element working against Houdinki, the departure of Jack Forster. As a constant stalwart figure of the company, Jack brings a veteran grey-headedness that appeals not just for the seasoned enthusiast, but also the new breed like me. Whenever Jack talks, we noobs collectively nod our heads, saying, Oh, this guy's got it. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks, Jack. Jack is our watch dad. However, last month, Jack moved to Watchbox, one of Houdinki's competitors and home of Tim Musso, our popular watch geek friend whom we tell our friends we know even though we're continents apart from each other. The shock was clearly felt around the web. It's like the Celtics getting Magic Johnson at the height of Larry Bird's career. It shows how Watchbox is winning more enthusiast hearts by being a merchant that offers deep quality watch content. By design, they are a business of a trade and not just a journalist that's trying to sell you his content. With Jack on board, Watchbox adds another voice of credibility while Houdinki loses a big chunk of theirs. And this is how Houdinki is now redesigned today. A watch resource that may or may not have a bias for the things that they sell. This by design chips away from any brand strength that Houdinki has or may have had when Jack was on board. Houdinki, the brand, used to walk with pride and prestige worn on its vest despite being a businessman under the hat, but not anymore. I'm willing to continue consuming Houdinki's content and maybe even in the near future buy something from their shop. However, I cannot help but think that Houdinki right now and the way their offices are lit is a blueprint for mediocrity.